Hello everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we'll solve some problems from current electricity. So this is the first problem. So in this question, we have two uncharged capacitors with capacitance C and they are connected to the cell of EMF 28 volt. And the circuit is present in this state for a very long time. So basically with the switch open and now the switch S is closed. Okay, now, now the inductance of the inductor is given to be L. So we have to figure out the maximum current in the inductor. So this is a situation at time t equal to zero. So this is just before the switch was closed. So in this situation, now as these two capacitors are in series, uh, they both will have the same current and both of them have the same capacitance. The potential drop across both of these will be E by two. So basically both the capacitors will have a charge of CE by two as this is a fully charged condition. So now what we are going to do is close this switch. So the inductor comes into picture as well. Okay, now let's say we close a switch and let's assume some current. So let's say a current of I leaves the battery and it splits into I1 in the inductor loop and which means in this branch it will be I minus I1. So and let's assume some random charges for the capacitor plate. So let's say this first capacitor has a charge of Q and minus Q and let's say this capacitor plate has, plate has a charge of Q prime and minus Q prime. Okay, so now we can apply KVL in the first loop. So we can write down E and moving across the capacitor plates, there is a potential drop of Q by C and moving across this capacitor plate, we have a potential drop of Q prime by C and this should all add up to zero. So this will be our equation number one. So our goal is technically just to figure out I1 as a function of time and we have to figure out the maximum of that, right? So now let's write down KVL for the second loop. So as we go from the negative plate to the positive plate, there is an increase in potential of Q prime divided by C. And the way you write the potential drop for the inductor is uh, first assume a direction of current, which is I1 in the downward direction in this case. And in the direction of the current, write the potential drop as minus L di by dt. Okay, and then now we equate it to zero. So this would be equation number two. Just for the sake of neatness, I am writing di1 by dt as I1 dot. So this just becomes L times I1 dot equals Q prime divided by C. So this would be equation number two. Okay guys, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna differentiate equation number one with respect to time. And so what I'm gonna get is dQ prime by dt. So the time derivative of Q prime is basically the current in this branch, right? So the rate at which Q prime is changing is going to be I minus I1. So this is going to be I minus I1. And dQ by dt is nothing but the current coming into the positive plate of this capacitor over here, which is simply I itself. So dQ by dt is going to be I, and this should add up to zero. The derivative of RHS is zero. And from here we get I1 equals two I. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna differentiate equation two with respect to time. So here what I obtain is L times the double derivative of I1, which I'm representing with two dots would equal one by C multiplied by DQ prime by DT, which is again I minus I1. Now I'm gonna borrow the value of I from here. So I is nothing but I1 by two. If I substitute that into this equation, this would become minus I1 divided by two C. So from here, what we finally get is I1 double prime equals minus one by two LC times I1. And from the chapter SHM, we know that the solution to this differential equation is a sinusoidal one. So we can write and we also know that initially the value of I1 is zero, right? So initially when we just uh, just connect the switch, the current in the inductor branch would be zero because we cannot instantaneously change the current in the inductor branch, right? So you know, initial value of I1 is zero. So we can assume I1 as some I naught sine of omega t. Okay, the reason for taking sine is because at t equal to zero, I is zero. And here obviously omega is the square root of this term, which is, one by square root two LC. Again, the answer to the question was I naught, which was the maximum value of the current, right? So that's what we have to figure out. So for that, we need one more boundary condition and that we obviously have to relate it to the initial charge of the capacitor, right? So if you observe this equation over here, which is our equation number two, uh, it basically says that L di one by dt equals Q prime by C. Now at t equal to zero, which is basically the time just after which the switch is closed, uh, using equation two, we can say L di one by dt is equal to Q prime at time t equal to zero divided by C. So one by C times Q prime at time t equal to zero. And we know at time t equal to zero, 
the charge on both the capacitor plates was CE by 2. So using that condition, this just becomes, uh, if I substitute it over here, it will be E by 2. Basically the value of I1 dot at t equal to 0 is E by 2L. So now let's differentiate our solution. So I1 dot is going to be I0 omega cos of omega t. And if I put t equal to 0, cos omega t uh, would, be, would become 1 and I1 dot which is E by 2L would be equal to I0 omega. So from here we get the value of I0 as E divided by 2L omega which turns out to be E times square root of C divided by 2L. So now if you substitute the value of E, C and L, we'll get the final answer as 7 amperes. So that was the answer to this question. Now let's move on to the next question. So in this question, we have been given a circuit and they're saying that the switches S1 and S2 are closed simultaneously at T0 and a current starts to flow in the circuit. Both the batteries have the same magnitude of the EMF and the polarities are indicated in the figure. So we have to ignore mutual inductance between the inductors and the current I in the middle wire reaches the ma reaches its maximum value I max at time t equal to tau. So we have to figure out I max and tau, okay? Which is basically the maximum value of the current uh, in the middle wire, which is over here. Okay, so whenever we have an LR circuit, you know, and the switch is just closed, meaning the current just starts to flow. When we, so when we write KVL for this uh, loop and solve for I, the solution that we obtain is the EMF E by R times 1 minus E to the power minus T by tau, where tau is a time constant, uh, which is equal to the inductance divided by the resistance of the circuit. So now I'm not going to be proving this, but this is pretty easy to solve for. Uh, all you have to do is write one KVL equation, solve a differential equation and use the boundary condition that at t equal to zero, the current is zero. Basically the switches are closed now. So in the left loop, let's say the circulating current is I1 and it's obviously in the clockwise direction. And in the right loop also, we can judge by the direction of the battery. It will be, it will still be in the clockwise direction, right? Okay, so in the middle wire, uh, a current of I1 is coming from the left, left branch and a current of I2 is coming from the branch on the right. So I is obviously in the downward direction, which means I is nothing but I1 minus I2. Now again, by using the formula that I discussed in the previous page, uh, we can directly write I1 as the EMF divided by the resistance times 1 minus e to the power minus R T by L and I2, we can write it as V by R, 1 minus e to the power minus R T divided by 2L. So now the difference of these two is what I is. Okay, so now in the question they asked us the maximum value of I. So you can either find the maxima of this expression or if you observe something, if I put this thing as some t for a while, so this term is nothing but t squared, right? So this is nothing but t squared minus t. So if you take t outside, what you obtain is t minus one. If you sketch the curve, this is basically a downward facing parabola which has roots zero and one. So its maximum will occur at t equals 0 0.5, right? So basically its maxima occurs when e to the power minus rt by 2l, which we took as t. So the value of, when the value of this thing becomes half, maximum will be achieved. If I take natural log on both sides, uh, what I obtain is rt by 2l is ln2. And from here, t, which is also, uh, which was given in the problem as tau, comes out to be 2l ln2 divided by r. The maximum value of the current, uh, for that we only have to put t equal to 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 is 0 0.25, 1 by 4. So this just becomes v by 4r. So the answer to this question will be v by 4r and 2l ln 2 by r. So option, so the answer to this question is b and d. Okay, so in this question, so in this question, we have been given a circuit. Again, the switch is closed at time t equal to zero. So we have to figure out the voltmeter reading. A, they're asking what is a vol voltmeter reading just after the key is pressed and after a very long time. Basically, we have to the potential drop across the voltmeter and the current in the ammeter as a function of time. Okay, so some of the question options in this question, we can figure out even without finding out the current and voltage as a function of time, but I'll just be finding out the potentials and current as a function of time. So first, let's say after we close the switch, let's say a current of I flows from the battery. So now as we go further into the circuit, uh, we are seeing a capacitor and the resistor. In, in between, we have a voltmeter branch. Now we know that in an ideal voltmeter, the resistance is extremely high. So which basically means the, the current here in the voltmeter branch is going to be zero. 
So basically the current that enters this capacitor will be the current that goes through this resistor over here. And similarly, the current entering this resistor will be the same current going in the capacitor branch. So this is pretty similar to the last problem. In the last question, we took it as two independent LR circuits. So in this question, we'll take it as two independent RC circuits. So again, let's discuss the basic result first. So let's say we, if we have a resistor and a capacitor initially uncharged, and if we just close the switch, then in this case, the charge on the positive plate of the capacitor as a function of time comes out to be CE, where E is the EMF times one minus E to the power minus T by tau. So, and here tau is nothing but R times C. Okay. So, so let's say the charge uh, on this capacitor, 40 microfarad capacitor at any general time is Q1. Similarly, the charge on this 20 microfarad capacitor is Q2. So we can write Q1 as a function of time. Uh, if you consider this loop over here, this is similar to this circuit, right? So for this circuit, C multiplied by E would be 40 microfarad times phi, which comes out to be 200 microcoulomb times one minus E to the power minus T by tau. So let's calculate the time constant for the upper circuit. So it is going to be 25 kilo ohms multiplied by 40 microfarad. So this just comes out to be one second. Okay. And, and if you similarly calculate the time constant for the, for the other RC circuit, even here, the time constant comes out to be one second. So Q1 just becomes 200, one minus E power minus T micro coulomb. Okay. Here C multiplied by V will be hundred micro micro coulomb. So this comes out to be hundred one minus E to the power minus T micro coulomb. So first let's talk about the voltmeter readings. So let's just mark the potential. So let's say this node has a potential of zero. So then we can say this node has a potential of five volt. Let's call this point to have a potential of V minus and this point to have a potential of V plus. So going from this node to this this node, we have a potential drop of Q1 divided by C. V minus is nothing but pi volt minus Q1, which we figured out divided by C and C here is 40 uh, microfarad and the micro from the numerator cancels out with the micro from the denominator. So SI unit wise, this is perfect. So now let's figure out V plus. So going from zero to V plus, we have a potential rise, right? Because this is the negative plate of the capacitor and this is the positive plate. So going from zero to V plus, we have a, there is a potential rise of Q2 divided by C. So V plus is nothing but Q2, which is 100, one minus E power minus T divided by the capacitance, which is 20. So now the voltmeter reading is going to be the potential difference, which is V plus minus V minus. So this becomes and from here we can see that at equal to zero, e power minus zero is one. So this just becomes minus five volt. So the reading is minus five volt. And at t tending to infinity, which is basically a very after a very large time, the voltmeter reading, as we can see, uh, is going to become five volt. So and that's exactly what is mentioned in option A. So at t equal to zero, minus five volt after a very long time, plus five volt. So now we have to figure out the voltmeter reading after ln two seconds. So if I put t equal to ln2 into this expression, e to the power minus ln2 will be half. One minus half is half. Half multiplied by 10 is five. Five minus five is zero. So at, this, so at t equal to ln2, the reading, uh, the voltmeter reading is going to be zero volt. So option B is also correct. So option C and D really uh, is asking us about the current in the ammeter. So the current in the ammeter is nothing but the current in this branch plus the current in this branch, right? So the current uh, in the upper branch is nothing but the time derivative of Q1 and the current in the lower branch is going to be the time derivative of Q2. So the current through the ammeter is nothing but Q1 dot plus Q2 dot. So if you differentiate Q1, it will be 200 e to the power minus t and Q and Q2 dot will be 100 e to the power minus t. So if you add both of them, you'll get the answer as 300 e to the power minus t. And uh, again, this is going to be micro amperes. So now checking the options, they're asking the current in the ammeter becomes one by e of the initial value after one second. So if I put equal to one second here, at equal to one second is 300 times e to the power minus one, which actually is one by e times the initial value, which is 300 micro amperes. So option C is correct. Now in option D, they're saying after a very long time, the current becomes zero and that is correct as well because we can see that the current is decaying exponentially so after a very long time e power minus t will tend to zero so option d is also correct all right guys so that was it for this video if you enjoyed the video please do like share and subscribe and that's it thanks for watching